You know that what that means at weddings. <laughs> Did I hit you with my hat? <laughs> Guys, Good. it's Beauty and the Beast time. <laughs> How do you feel about being here during Beauty and the Beast? Wow. <laughs> Guys, I'm just so honored to be here. <laughs> First good movie I've watched with you for this. Careful, you're gonna tip the beast. <laughs> Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Justin, and I'm watching Every Disney Movie. Today I have Audrey. Hi guys. And we are going to talk about Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, we are. Starting <laughs> off so strong. I can't believe we already are at Beauty and the Beast. Like it's been what four videos, and it's yeah. Beauty and the Beast. Here we are. Here we are. As per usual with these longer videos, <laughs> we have snacks. Yes, we do. Um, not, not a sponsor. sponsor. <laughs> We have salt and vinegar chips. Um, yes. It came. Yeah, this is ridiculous. What is this? Per my channel um, tradition, Stable. I found peanut butter M&Ms. Hey. I know for a Little Mermaid, I couldn't find peanut butter M&Ms, and they had to be regular, which is fine. We love regular, but um, we stand the peanut butter M&M here yes. in this house. Hashtag stand. <laughs> and then, as a super super special treat. Yes. <laughs> We made gray stuff. <laughs> it's the gray stuff and it's Should delicious. We? Shall yes. we? It should be the first thing we yes. taste. Dink it. Oh, oh, cheers. Dink it. Sink it. Sink it. Oh, God. oh man. Don't make oh, a man. Don't, Don't make, make a, mess. a mess. Don't make a mess. Mm. <laughs> Guys, it's just whipped cream. <laughs> but delicious. It is whipped cream <laughs> with three drops of black pepper. <laughs> Beauty and the Beast is a 1991 animated theatrical release. It is directed by Gary Trousdale and Kirk Wise, both of whom are known for their Disney work, such as Atlantis and Hunchback and Lion King and Spirit Away. And this. And this, <laughs> obviously, because they directed this. Right. There are 11 supervising animators. Six of them I've covered in previous videos. It's Ruben A. Aquino, Andreas Deja, Russ Edmonds, Mark Henn, Glenn Keane, and Nick Rainieri. Those are all the ones I've covered before. In previous videos, they'll be listed in the link in the description. I also thought it'd be fun to start including like what they were the supervising animator of. For instance, Ruben A. Aquino was in charge of Maurice. Mm -hmm. And then animators I haven't covered yet, James Baxter, he was the supervising animator for Belle. And he's best known for things like Hunchback and Mary Poppins Returns and Kung Fu Panda and Spirit. Will Finn is the supervising animator for Cogsworth, and he's best known for Hunchback, Home on the Range, The Secret of Nim, and Pocahontas. David Pruixma was the supervising animator for Mrs. Potts and Chip, and he's best known for all things Disney, like yeah. Aladdin and Lion King, and I'm pretty and sure Atlantis. Atlantis and Pocahontas. <laughs> Chris Wall is the supervising animator of LeFou, and he's best known for Atlantis, Aladdin, Lion King, and Pocahontas. The film was edited by John Carnican, and he's best known for editing things like The Lion King, The Book of Life, The Simpsons movie, Robots. The music was done by the one and only Alan Menken, and the lyrics were by Howard Ashman. And Jess covered it in The Little Mermaid, so the link will be in the description. The film was written by Linda Wolverton, and she's best known for Lion King, Maleficent, the 2017 version of Beauty and the Beast. And this, this was actually the first animated film at Disney to have a screenwriter, because they normally all work together and made the story through storyboards. But Jeffrey Katzenberg was like, we're having a screenwriter. That's cool, I yeah. didn't know that. Fun fact. That's what I'm full of. <laughs> Guys, do you know what part's next? Oh, I do. <laughs> Strap in. It's gonna be a ride. I'm prefacing this with we do not speak French. I am so sorry right now on behalf of the both of us. Beauty and the Beast is based off a story called Beauty and the Beast or La Belle et la Bête by Gabrielle Suzanne Barbat de Villeneuve, released in 1740. Yes, and Jean Marie Le Prince de Beaumont abridged the long version in 1756. Shall we compare? 
widower merchant lives in his mansion with his 12 children. All the daughters are beautiful, but the youngest is the fairest of them all, and that's why she's named Beauty. She was kind, pure, and intelligent, while her sisters were vain, selfish, and spoiled. The merchant loses his fortune and is forced to live in a cottage and work with his family. Beauty is determined to adjust while her sisters think she's stupid. One of the merchant's ships returns, and he goes off to meet it. He asks his daughters what gifts they would like. The daughters ask for clothing, jewels, and the like, but Beauty asks for his safety. When he pushes Beauty for what she wants, she says a rose. The merchant discovered that his cargo was seized to pay off his debts. On his way home, the merchant gets lost. He's lost then. I wonder what's gonna happen. You maybe he'll meet a beast. Spoiler alert. <laughs> he finds a palace and sees that food and drink were left for him. In the morning, the merchant decides the castle is now his and he leaves to get his children. You can't just go around claiming people's castles. Yeah. Who does he think he is? On his way out, he passes a rose garden and plucks a bouquet of roses for beauty. He is confronted by a hideous beast who threatens to kill him for stealing. The merchant explained why he picked the flowers. The beast agrees to set him free on the condition he brings back one of his daughters to take his place without deception. <laughs> I'm captivated. The beast sends the merchant away with wealth, clothes, and jewels. All gifts for his children. Once home, the merchant recounts his tale. The sons offer to fight the beast, and the daughters blame Beauty. Beauty agrees to go to the castle. When they arrive, the beast welcomes her with a fantastic ceremony. He gives her great gifts and holds many conversations with her. She surmises he is inclined to stupidity, not savagery. Every night, the beast asks Beauty to sleep with him, and she refuses. She begins to imagine a handsome prince that she is falling in love with. An apparition warns her not to be deceived by appearances. Beauty becomes convinced that the beast is holding the prince captive in his castle. She comes across across many enchantments, libraries, theaters, animals that act as servants, but no prince. After months of living a lavish life, Beauty begs to return home to see her family. He allows it on the condition she return in two months' time. She is given an enchanted ring that allows her to appear in her old home. Her sister's jealousy flares when their suitors turn their attention to Beauty. Ugh. Typical. <laughs> She bestows extravagant gifts and ensures the men that she is there only to support her sisters. Two months pass and Beauty envisions the beast dying alone and hastens to leave. Her brothers protest, but she leaves anyway. She returns to the castle, finding Beast near death. She realizes she loves him. She uses water to resuscitate him. When he awakes, she agrees to marry him. In the morning, she wakes next to the handsome prince from her dreams. The fairy and a woman in a gold carriage appear. The woman is the prince's mother and is disappointed beauty isn't of noble birth. Why does that even matter? Like, if she's a good human being, shouldn't she just be happy <laughs> for her son? It's a fairy tale. <laughs> The fairy informs them all that Beauty is her niece, and Beauty's real father is the queen's brother from Happy Island. The prince explains that when his father died, his mother had to wage war to defend the kingdom. She left him with an evil fairy who tried to seduce him when he came of age. When he refused, she turned him into a beast. The spell could be broken once he found true love. The prince and Beauty are married and they live happily ever after. The, the end. end. I don't think y'all understand how long it takes to film that segment. It's only like a minute on screen for you guys. Mm -hmm. It's like an hour of filming for us. <laughs> I like the original story better than the animated film. Yeah? Yeah. It makes more sense. You know what I mean? It does make a little more sense. Like, she chose to go be with the Beast. She technically chooses in True. the movie, because she's like, take me instead. But in that one, he receives her right away. Right. With, like, lavish gifts and mm -hmm. a ceremony, like, in the original. Right. Where in this one, she's thinking she's going to be locked up in a tower, because that's what her dad was doing. Right. And then he's like, okay, come stay in a room. And she's like, what is going on? Yeah. Um. And then, obviously, she's an only child. Her dad's an inventor. We don't know if he's a widower. Mm-hmm. There's this a lot true. of differences. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, and the whole, like, fairy thing. Yeah, random. Mm -hmm. And the mom... And there's no, like, time limit. Right, yeah. That's a big curse. difference. It's literally just, like, whenever mm -hmm. he finds true love, the curse is broken. The film stars Paige O'Hara, Robbie Benson, Jerry Orbach, David Ogden Steers, Angela Lansbury, Richard White, Bradley Pierce, Jesse Corti, and Rex Everhart. Paige O'Hara plays Belle and is best known as Belle in everything. Robbie Benson plays Beast. And he's best known for Friends, One on One, The Ed Sullivan Show, and this. Jerry Orbach plays Lumiere, and he's best known for Law and Order, Dirty Dancing, Crimes and Misdemeanors, and this. David Ogden Steers plays Cogsworth, and he 
is best known for MASH, Pocahontas, Lilo and Stitch, and this. Angela Lansbury plays Mrs. Potts, and she's best known for The Manchurian Candidate, Anastasia, Bedknobs and Broomsticks, Murder, She Wrote, and this. Bradley Pierce plays Chip, and he's best known for Jumanji, Pokemon Detective Pikachu, The Borrowers, and this. Richard White plays Gaston, and he's best known for Great Performances, King's Quest, and All Gaston All the Time. Jesse Cordy plays LeFou, and he's best known for Hulk, Heist, Zootopia, and this. Rex Everhart plays Maurice, and he's best known for Friday the 13th, Superman, The Seven Ups, and this. Walt and the studio tried adapting Beauty and the Beast in the 30s and the 50s, but gave up because it kept being hard on the story team. The studio resurrected Beauty and the Beast during Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Richard Purdom was hired to direct. At the beginning of this film process, they were in London animating, like the big animators like Glenn Keane and... Um, a bunch of the other, Ruben, all of them were in London working with Richard, who was the director, on a film that was really faithful to the source material, and Richard was so excited about it. And then in 1989, Katzenberg scratched it all and had them start over, and that caused Richard Purdom to resign. So then Jeffrey brought in Gary Trousdale and Kirk Wise, who had just come off of like animating and directing a six minute little thing. They've never done anything like this. So they were deemed acting directors, <laughs> which meant it was kind of like a probation period. And they decided to go the musical route and everything started to kind of come together in about like six months in. I think they were granted like actual directorship because it was going so well. Yeah. Howard Ashman, as many of you know, I've said it in the past now, uh, was suffering from AIDS, so they moved production from London to New York. They revamped the story to add more characters and to make a true villain of Gaston. Jody Benson was considered for the role of Belle, but they decided they wanted a more womanly sound than a girl sound. Jody Benson was still like 23, 24, and Paige O'Hara was obviously older than that. Production was to be two years instead of four, and it was mostly done in the airway facility in Glendale. This was the second film to use CAPS, which was the computer animation production system, and it was Down Under was the first one. The ballroom was actually computer generated. The dance was recycled from Sleeping Beauty because they were pressed for time. So Angela Lansbury actually didn't want to sing the title song because she felt like it really didn't fit her voice, but the production team begged her to do just one take and she agreed to it. And they asked her to just perform it how you envision it and how you picture the song going. And she sang it one time through. It brought the whole room to tears and that's the song that made it into the film. And it won an Oscar. Howard Ashman died before the film was released. However, filmmakers showed a pre-screening of it at a theater in New York and received very high praise and very good responses and went to see Howard right afterward and told him how well it did and he died four days later. So the movie was shown at a film festival in September of 1991, and it was only 70% complete. So that means that most of the film was done, but they still had some scenes that had storyboards or just needed a Pencil little bit tests. of- Yeah, all that good stuff. And at the end of the film, it received a standing ovation for 10 minutes. Yeah, and as I watched the bonus features, there's a behind the like untold story or whatever. They also talked that like, after the opening number, like the bell number, people clapped and they were like, oh, okay, well, that's good. <laughs> and then after Be Our Guest, people clapped uh -huh. and they were like, um, okay. <laughs> yeah. And Don Hahn, the producer said like, people were suspending their disbelief enough to completely buy like the pencil tests and like right. they were laughing and crying and having a good time. It was yeah. extraordinary. The film had a budget of $25 million and it made 145.9? Yes million dollars domestic and 331.9 million dollars internationally. The film was very well received and actually Roger Ebert gave it four full stars. And it has an 84% on Rotten Tomatoes and it is the first animated feature to ever be nominated for Best Picture. Yes. There was a Broadway musical adaptation in 1994 and it is fire. Straight fire. Yes. We love learning about Beauty and the Beast. Hope you guys do too. You better. That's why you're here. Yeah. I mean, if you made it this far, you must like it. Feels far for us. It's probably nothing. <laughs> As I'm sure you can tell by the thumbnail, we have this DVD. Yes. Which is the um, Platinum Edition. It's the Special Edition DVD. I do not have the Blu-ray. Don't come for me, okay? I didn't have time. All right? <laughs> 
too THX much. THX certified. THX certified. <laughs> so the only bonus features on this disc was a commentary, a Maurice game, a sing-along of the film, and then a, some kind of spell game. Break the spell game. Oh. That's it. I didn't play any of the games because I didn't want to. <laughs> Maybe um, we will It's not after. that important. <laughs> so um, that's it for this. However, for those of you that have Disney Plus, did you know they have an extra section yeah, on which Disney is Plus? So cool. It is so cool. So it definitely doesn't have all the special features that are available on like DVD or Blu-ray when you purchase them, especially like two disc DVDs or like the new Blu-ray digital combo package. It definitely doesn't have all the special features that those might have, and maybe if I buy the Beauty and the Beast like mega Blu-ray digital combo, whatever, and it has way more bonus features, and there's info I haven't told you, maybe I'll make like a little bonus video. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, Disney Plus it does have some extras. They have a trailer, they have like this little four minute as told by emojis thing, yeah. and then they have um, Alan Menken, so it's Menken and Friends, 25 years of musical inspiration and it is him and the Lopez couple that write the Frozen soundtrack, Lin-Manuel Miranda and Steven Schwartzman, yeah, who are all <laughs> who are all incredibly famous humans. Yeah. Not just in Disney royalty, but in Broadway royalty. Steven Schwartzman, wicked Pippin. Oh, yeah. Lin-Manuel Miranda did Hamilton, and now he's done Moana, and the Lopez, I don't, um, Robert Lopez, Bobby, did Book of Mormon on Broadway, and him and his wife have done Frozen, mm -hmm. and Alan Menken, obviously, is Alan Menken, had created the Disney sound that we know and love today, basically, Yep, and it's basically them just sitting around the piano, having fun, talking about Beauty and the Beast, and what they love about it, and... There's fun little things they point out. I showed it to you. Yeah, you yeah, it. yeah. You loved it. I love, my personal favorite tidbit in the little mm. conversation is Stephen Schwartzman talks about how he was done with musical writing. He's like, I don't want to do it anymore. I'm going back to school to be a therapist. That's it. And then Alan was like, well, what would you consider just coming to write lyrics so I can, like, for a Disney movie? And he said, okay. Mm. And then after that, he abandoned his his therapy career and went back into writing musicals. So basically he said there would be no Wicked without Alan yeah. Menken, which is insane. Yeah, I really enjoyed that little segment too because Alan Menken would just start playing like a Disney song and he would just be like, do 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 do. And everybody's like, play more! I want to hear more. it! And he, and he just did so it so often. effortlessly, yeah, but course. I mean, because it came from his brain, you yeah. know? So the other major bonus feature is the untold stories from the making of Beauty and the Beast. Mm -hmm. um, and they pretty much talk about the stuff we've already covered. Yeah. Um, what I really loved, there was like this whole kind of section in there where they talked about a lot of arguments. Oh. Which was very cool. So Linda Wolverton, who was the screenwriter, mm -hmm. and then Roger Allers, who was obviously some kind of story supervisor, constantly <laughs> were fighting because she would write a script uh -huh. and give it to them, and the next day she'd come and see storyboards that had nothing to do with what she wrote, <laughs> and they like would not stop arguing, and Peter Schneider, who was in charge of like the animation pretty much, um, was like, okay, so obviously you two need to work closer together. And they were like, what? <laughs> so he forced them to like constantly be with each other working. And all of a sudden it started to work and it started to flow and they started to make better decisions and like working to, you know, collaborative. So like, even though, and someone else in there said, even though there was arguing and you might hate someone, you all had the same goal. Right. So it was like you still would work together to get that goal achieved. And it was a really fascinating, like, wow, they're talking about arguing. Like, that's very, I feel like, not Disney to mm. talk about that there were arguments. Right, yeah. Yeah, well, that's like, you know, if there's conflicting ideas, like, if there's arguing, it's just because, like you mentioned, they want to get and find the right solution, the perfect solution to their problem at hand. And they just want to make sure it's done right. So yeah. I totally get that. Yeah. And then Roger Allers told another cool story where they were listening to the opening bell number. And toward the end, when like Gaston's trying to follow Bell, Allers was like, you know, it feels a bit empty there. Like it feels like more musical stuff could be going on. And Howard goes, okay, Alan, play. Show us what you need. And Roger Allers is like, ha, oh, oh. ha. So Alan starts playing it. And then like 
Roger's like, I had to come up with stuff off my head, so I'm like, please let me through. <laughs> I need a bread and blah, blah, six blah. eggs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, six eggs, all that kind of stuff. And then he sits down, and Howard goes, Yeah, that's good. We'll do that. <laughs> and you're just like, Oh, oh. And he was like, Oh. <laughs> Those are all the bonus features. Yeah. The beginning was actually really pretty. You know, with the stained glass and. So true. I think it really set the tone for the whole movie too, mm-hmm. you know? And it just sort of set the bar of like, okay, this is where our animation's gonna be. This is the kind of movie that this is gonna be too. But I, yeah, I love the prologue. Yes, me too. And I feel like it covers like the background and what the viewer needs to know in a really nice, concise little package. Yes. You know, and go ahead. Also, I need <laughs> to say something really quick before we continue with notes. We both love this movie. 100%. Love it. I'm spoiling right now. I give this movie a 10, okay? I give it 10 whatever I'm going to choose at the end out of whatever, okay? Now, that being said, I'm going to be nitpicky. Yeah. Me too. Let's keep going. <laughs> so, yeah, I just really like the prologue. Long story short, I really Same. like the prologue. Little town, it's a quiet village. Every day, like the one before. All right, we're getting a little. Um, one of my first notes I thought was interesting is when Gaston is first introduced, LeFou says, no beast stands a chance against you or girl. And I was like, ha ha, ah, oh, we love a good foreshadow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because both a beast and girl will stand against him. Yep. Watching it as adult, an adult and like knowing the plot line of it, like I can pay attention more to like the actual art of the film and like mm-hmm. sitting next to someone who went to film school, I'm like trying to be, you know, <laughs> like aware of those things, you know? But I also noticed too that Belle is the only villager to be wearing blue. Yep. All right, y'all. Here we go. Here's where I'm going to get nitpicky and people are going to be all upset. They're going to be like, don't be like that. It's a great movie. No one cares about the Stockholm Mm. Syndrome or the bestiality thing. Well, guess what? I care. Mm -hmm. Because first of all, the beast is so wishy-washy. Like right at the beginning, the first moment you meet the beast, he is horrifying to Maurice. So scary. Yeah. And like, oh my gosh, super animalistic too. Yeah, That's something like, I noticed hair too. Hair up, growling, walking on. I'll all show fours. you where you can go, and like throws him in freaking prison or whatever in the dungeon. But it's a tower. Right. It's not a dungeon. Yeah. Get it right. Um, get it right. <laughs> and then like the minute Belle is there, he's all nasty. Right. But then the second Maurice is gone and she's all crying in her tower, he's like, I'll show you to your room. And you're like, dude, where? Right. What? What Where happened? did this come from? Right. Like, we have only known you as a horrifying creature up until this point. Right. And now you're all, like, sad and sorry. And then, like, you get really mad at her when she doesn't want to come have dinner with you. But she is quite literally your prisoner. Right. And then Lumiere is all, she is not our prisoner. Mm-hmm. She's our, our guest. guest. And it's like, oh, Lumiere, she is your prisoner. <laughs> She yeah. is your prisoner, Lumiere. She's not allowed to leave. Right. Yeah. Just because she's in a nicer room doesn't mean she's a guest now. Like, she's still there against her will. Some could argue she's not there against her will because she agreed to take her father's place and Correct. promised to stay there forever, which means that is willing. But if given the choice, she she's Audi 5000. Who wants to be there? Right. No one. Yeah. God, yeah, makes me so mad, dude. Yeah. Ooh. I have a note in here that says, how can a movie make me so mad? But I love it so much. <laughs> yeah, I agree. There's Pretty so much many how questions. I feel about this movie. There's like just so many questions that arise when watching this movie as an adult too. Like, yeah, yeah, bring up the age. Yeah, but like, first of all, yeah, like they say like the bit's beginning, the enchanted rose will be alive and bloom and it'll stay that way until his 21st birthday. So then, fast forward to be our guests, and they say that they've been 10 years, like, rusting and not doing anything. So that would mean, if you do the math, that the prince would be 10 when he encountered the enchantress and all of that happened. And he refused her. Right, exactly. And then she, like, gets all mad at him. And it's like, if he had been, like, 10 or 11, you just reprimand the kid. You don't turn him into a beast. He's a kid. Exactly. So when I was watching it, I saw there were two moments where the beast is bleeding and you actually see the blood and I did not remember that from my childhood 
at all. Yeah. So I'm wondering if it's something they added much later, like in a restoration. Yeah. Because I was watching it, and like when he gets attacked by the wolves, his arm bleeds, and I was like, Yeah, whoa. <laughs> Blood. Mm-hmm. And then when he gets stabbed by Gaston, he bleeds a good chunk, and I was. Shooketh. Yeah. Comment comment down below if you remember. Blood yeah. Do you or remember? Not. I get emotional during the library scene every mm-hmm. time, even though like you can't give someone a library. <laughs> like it just, I mean, you can, I guess, yeah. like name it after her or something. It's not like you yeah. can move it. She can take yeah, it with get her. Yeah, get a plaque. <laughs> Bell's library. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hear me out. We can't really solve the Stockholm syndrome situation. Um, that's kind of pretty much. We just got to deal with that. That's pretty much what's going on here. Right. However, you could solve the bestiality problem by just saying, "We're all supposed to be human. There is a curse." We can't tell you how to break the curse. We are forbidden from telling you how to break it. But there is one, and we are all supposed to be human. Yeah. That one sentence solves you from the nasty bestiality problem. Because then she knows that he isn't actually a beast. Right. And he's supposed to be a person. So then falling in love with his personality is a total okay thing to be happening. Yeah. But she doesn't know... That it's just love that's supposed to break the curse. And she's like, I really wish I could help him, but they can't tell me how to. And right. I don't know how to, but oh, guess what? I love you, and I mm-hmm. wish you were human. And then, ba like, yeah. no, in a bit alarming. And I'm like, yes, it is. It is Not alarming. A bit alarming. Alarming. I cried. Also, <laughs> so there will be a cry cap, just saying. Yeah. I think, too, if I was watching it alone with the same, like, you know, intensity Intense. and, yeah, like looking at it, like, very, like, not critically, but, you know. Looking at it as closely. Really paying attention. Right, yeah. yeah. I think I probably would have cried, too. Yeah. Mop song gives me goosebumps. Yes. There was a hidden Mickey. Yeah. The gate. Yeah. Hidden Mickey. Definitely. Only from one angle. Right, yeah. In that one shot. I have zero empathy for Gaston. Who does? I'm just gonna say that right He's now. He's the worst. Like, he... Like, at the beginning, I was getting the most pissed off about it. Because, like, he's like, oh, Belle is the beautiful, most beautiful of them all. I'm going to make her my wife. But he gives no regard to, like, anything she actually genuinely cares about. Like, he just tosses a book that she obviously was just reading, you know, and gives her... I almost said a bad word. Gives her stuff about it, you know? Like, he just is like, oh, you shouldn't be reading. You need... Women get a, can't get ideas. Exactly. Yeah. So then, and then too, he like makes this whole wedding plan too, you know, and he didn't even ask her and he, she doesn't even know anything. Like, of course she's going to kick you out and like not marry you. Yep. Weren't there plates? <laughs> <laughs> Before they became plates? Right. So like, where'd those plates go? Right. And so like during the whole Be Our Guest thing. Thing. Like the plates are moving around, and like there's certain forks that do a kick line, you know, but not all of the forks are doing a kick line. So then I'm confused on like, okay, so are the ones that are just moving that don't have a face, are those the objects that were there and just were enchanted to be able to move? Or were they people? <laughs> like, what's going on? Like, I feel like if it's an animate, like a servant, it should have a face. Like, if it was a human. So then, if not, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. When you're watching the movie, do you care at all that there are forks without faces? (laughs) No. But we do. (laughs) But when I'm watching it for this purpose, I do care that there are forks without faces. Where did the other utensils go that weren't humans? Right. Exactly. How did they decide that they were going to get all fancy that one night? During Beauty and the Beast, the song. You know, like, one day do they wake up and were they just like, man, you know, maybe we should, like, dress up a little bit tonight for dinner, you know. Have like, a little ball, just yeah, just two. Yeah, yeah, you know, party for two. You know, how'd that happen? Suspend your disbelief. <laughs> Listen, Prince Adam isn't his official name, but we are going to refer to him as Prince Adam for the sake of understanding that I'm talking about the prince and not the beast, yeah. okay? Human beast. His official name is not Prince Adam, so don't come for me, all right? But we're going to call him Prince Adam for the sake of no confusion. Correct. He turns into Prince Adam, right? Stunning. He's beautiful. We love blowing hair. Anything they are in after this movie, it is Belle and the Beast. And listen, I just went on such a long rant about the bestiality (laughs) concept. So, House of Mouse. Right. 
anything, like any movie, they're an Easter egg in. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. In theme parks. Too. Kingdom Hearts. Theme parks. He is the beast. Mm -hmm. And I get mm -hmm. it. He's the beast the majority of the movie. Mm -hmm. That's what people like and want to see. But like, ew. Yeah. I demand <laughs> more Prince Adam content. I want a name for him, first of all. If it ends up being Prince Adam, fire. Because yeah. pretty much everyone's calling him that anyway. <laughs> yep. But if it doesn't end up being Prince Adam, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Okay? I want more Prince Adam content. I yep. want to see him and Belle together. Right. That's what I want in my life. Me too. That's all she yes. wrote. <laughs> we did it! What would you give the movie? Oh man, okay. I have to go 10. I'm sorry. Then what? what are we gonna do? Ooh! Um. Beasts. <laughs> 10 promises we don't plan to keep. We don't intend to keep. <laughs> That's funny. No, let's do. How about. Enchanted Roses? <gasps> oh, yeah, I love that. Let's do that. Okay. okay, 10 Enchanted Roses out of 10. 10 Enchanted Roses out of 10. As always, you can see my breakdown of the scoring down below in the description. Mm -hmm. But I gave it a 10, so. Yeah. 10 Enchanted Roses out of 10. Our total movie count is. Ayo. <laughs> Our cry count is. <laughs> parent death is still this. Parent death toll is still the same. Mm -hmm. If you want to keep up with what movie I'm watching when, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. You'll find out what movie I'm watching when. I put out videos every Monday, Wednesday, and fr well, Monday and Friday and sometimes Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, let's be real. Uh, please, please check out my Patreon. I just started a Patreon. If you are interested in getting bonus content, behind the scenes, live streams, t-shirts, hopefully eventually. Yeah, brand. I don't know if merch is available yet. Probably not. Eventually, uh, though, it will be. Who knows? You get video chats from me, personal vlogs, the whole nine. Check out my Patreon. The link will be in the description. I yeah. encourage you to sign up because it will have a lot of fun over there. There will be a behind the scenes from this video. It'll be great. Super huge thanks to yeah. Audrey Aww. for being here. Well, thanks for having me. It, it was, was so much fun. Again. Yeah. Thank you live you. for Audrey coming oh, and literally <laughs> participating in all of it. Can you believe how well she did during the comparing? Aww. Snaps for Audrey because yeah. I can't Aww. Bet. Thanks. So well, sweet. Love having you. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Um, well, thank everybody you Everybody say you love Audrey in the comments. Uh, yeah, because I'll be there. <laughs> yes, you will. She reads the comments. I do. So be uh, nice. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Until next time. Comment, like, subscribe, and on our channel if you are, so you do, and don't be guest on about it. Obviously. Oh I might cry. my god. <laughs> Dude, that <laughs> has to be like three hours. Uh, yeah. That was nuts. That was nuts. I am like, how did we did it? Fuck off my wait, ears. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Guys. Our gray stuff <laughs> is just melted. Yeah, we officially wrapped on the filming, <laughs> but. Don't make that sound effects <laughs> with it.